Major art theft in Boston overnight. Two thieves posing as police officers overpowered museum guards. Very dramatically said, gentlemen, this is a robbery. A part of our heritage has been stolen. This horrible thing occurred in 1990. Everything changed because of that. Someone on the inside helped the thieves. From the guys who brought you Missing Maura Murray and Crawl Space. Empty Frames will be available on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your favorite podcasts on February 6th. Also, I want to point out, there's a lot of panning shots of women who are covered in blood with their legs ever so slightly spread. Yes. <laughs> I don't know yeah, if it was the intention him. of this movie for me to jerk off to it, but I did. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because nothing else will quiet the screaming lambs. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting to my immediate left is my good friend Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thank you, sir. Welcome back to you from vacation. Yes, just got back from Colorado where the laws are awesome. <laughs> and sitting 989 miles to my right is my bad friend Eli Bosnick. Eli, how go things with you, sir? You're not going to leave again, right? You promised that was just once every 40 years. <laughs> That's, <and> you don't, <laughs> That's you're my, not going to do that anymore, my right? My current vacation schedule. Yes, yes, exactly. Someone asked me what agnosticism means, and I just shot. I didn't know. <laughs> I don't actually That's know. what you said to do, right? <laughs> Yes, that's actually, that's, a, that's the note I left on the fridge. So <laughs> tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? All right. Um, we watched <laughs> If Footmen Tire You, What Will Horses Do? Which is uh, an anti-communist Christian propaganda film from 1971. Mm -hmm. And uh, I... I don't really know what to say here. Uh, I don't think I don't think I could describe it to no. you, other than just like naming the things that happen on screen in order. So, I should probably just go ahead and start reciting the movie frame for frame. I guess I don't. I don't think I can help. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm afraid we're going to have to work to keep this from being a five-hour episode. So, Eli, how incredible was this movie? This was the greatest thing <laughs> that's ever happened to anyone, especially me. I've been blown on a roller coaster, and this was by far scarier, more arousing. There's nothing to describe this. This movie, the, the words I'm going to say are true. It, you know how I go, hey, it's like a blah. It's like a preacher who was crazy somehow managed to illustrate all of his crazy preaching <laughs> with video clips. That's the yeah. craziest thing I can say because that's what the movie is. <laughs> that's what happens in the – again, I abstain – to Heath, we just need to recite. <laughs> I think we should just film. start naming Can things. Can the interstitials just be the movie? Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> well, and not that long. Well, apparently, what happened here? Okay, this the fellow Ron Ormond who directed and and quote unquote wrote this movie. Uh, was an unexceptional grindhouse director whose credits included such classics as Outlaw Women, Frontier Women, Mesa of Lost Women, and Untamed <laughs> Mistress. But then in 1968, he found him some Jesus and teamed up with 1970s Pastor Manning to make a movie about hell S and sounds, commies. <laughs> sounds like he did some Ted Cruz commercials, too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's the one who hired that softcore porn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. From the old days. So now I think there are so many things that this movie was the worst at. It was the worst at mostly everything. But is there like one element that you think it was the worst at being the worst at? Like, like was it, what was its best worst? Um, mm. I, can I say not accidentally catching the actors smiling, breathing, and otherwise being fine when they're supposed to be dead? <laughs> <laughs> is that, 
Is that a category? Because <laughs> that part was So delightful. many times there's a person just like scratching his ass and they're like, Dave, you got shot. Fuck you. <laughs> I'm going to slowly lie down. Dave was all the extras in this movie. I was going to go with makeup because in those scenes, I, the whole movie looked like Ed Wood was directing a chick track after an explosion at the ketchup factory in Bucksnort, Tennessee. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah. what we watched. Like, and there's constantly everybody's covered in blood, and we have these long lingering shots of everybody covered in blood, but the blood is clearly like ketchup, and it's dried up yeah. now, and there's French fries in some of <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah, it's, they look less shot than normal people. <laughs> like, they could just be lying down, and they would look more shot than they look with the makeup they got in this movie. <laughs> Right. Yeah, they don't mention this, but about 10,000 bottles of Heinz were destroyed in the making of this film. <laughs> yeah. Didn't say it in it the It does credits, say but... that at the end. Oh, it's, I it's meant, in the I credits. It. Yeah. yeah. Um, also, I would say costuming was uh, – this movie was the worst costuming movie we've ever seen because holy shit, the 70s. <laughs> I, I wrote down repeatedly, the clothing patterns are the most disturbing thing about this movie. <laughs> yeah. The most offensive and the hardest to look at. So – I feel like before we even get into it, we have to kind of give everybody an idea of what exactly we're watching. And I think Eli really just did spell it. It's it's literally a crazy person ranting for almost an hour with some of his mental ejecta being acted out. That's all it is. <laughs> There's no plot. There aren't characters who have, like, actions and whatnot. It's no. just craziness with skits. <laughs> yeah. With And we keep coming back to this guy. This guy, Estes Perkle... <laughs> Estes Perkle looks like Anderson Cooper's homophobic dad. <laughs> I cannot, and we just want, he's just staring into the camera the entire movie. He looks like Alfred E. Newman grew up to be a tax attorney. <laughs> He's the worst looking human I've ever, and we just keep calling back to his face. Oh my he God. He looks like the word businessman shat its pants. That's when, that's when he look. he looks like Ron Howard got scared by a ghost as a child <laughs> and just never made it out. Okay, he looks like a three-day-old Chinese food nightmare about Green Acres. He is the worst thing I have ever seen. And I've been blown on a roller coaster. He is the worst <laughs> thing. I want to play this game. I want to play this game. He looks like the uh, the son George Bush Sr. always wanted, but never had. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. an amalgamation of the yeah. two, yes. <laughs> it looks like Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher are actually siblings, and they had an incest baby together <laughs> in 1902. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, he looks like uh, he looks like he tried to kill Kennedy by praying, and he thinks it works. <laughs> he looks like that guy, and acts like that too. Yes. <laughs> and he d this this one's for real. He looks exactly like recessive Ross Perot. Like, oh my no, god! Exactly. So. Like yeah. Ross Perot's parents rolled a whole bunch of ones and twos on their D twenty, <laughs> and, and that's what happened. Which is saying a lot, because like we're assuming that Ross Perot is the six in this. Yeah, scenario. right. <laughs> I wrote down. Please tell me he has a chart at some point. Please, <laughs> please tell me someone won't let him finish. It didn't happen. <laughs> Can I finish? No, didn't happen. Yeah, no. no. Sad, but uh, yeah, no. He <laughs> he looks like he has no teeth. And also too many teeth at the same time, which was <laughs> like he has eight teeth, but it seems like too many. Yeah. 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 If the yeah. word rape hired a stockbroker, this is what it would hire. <laughs> that's, that's what I have to say. Oh, shit. I've got nothing. He looks like Orville Redenbacher at his fighting weight. <laughs> it looks like uh, it looks like Pat Robertson's ass baby, or maybe you, you dry John Cena up into jerky. You know what he looks like? <laughs> Estes Perkle looks like white Barack Obama chose the wrong cup in the last crusade. That's what he looks like. Just took a little peek into the Ark of the Covenant. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You caught him just a minute after. No, you know what he looks like? He looks like the face you picture if somebody said Estes Perkle. That's what he fucking looks like. Exactly. Holy shit, this guy. Looks like Gilligan fucked the skipper. <laughs> Very similar. To I have that. a feeling this could go on forever, but uh, I think we're all working hard not to squirt <laughs> early on this movie. So I think we're going to need to take a quick break, think about baseball for a little bit. And when we come back, we'll make international gorillas look sane with If Footmen Tire You, What Will Horses Do? Between this show, The Scathing Atheist, and The Skeptocrat, we've now released well over 200 episodes, and I hope we've made it clear in that time that we take pride in trying to offer our audience the best crafted and best edited podcasts that we can. 
which is why we were so disheartened when we discovered that an editing error left a half-minute echoing artifact in last week's show. So we wanted to take a minute this week to apologize for that oversight and vow to redouble our efforts to ensure that mistakes like that don't occur again in the future. And of course, we also believe in taking full responsibility for our mistakes. So I want to make it very clear that Noah did all the editing on last week's God Awful Movies. Yes, yes, I did. Yeah, because I was busy doing all the editing for the entirely echoless Skeptocrat and Scathing Atheist episodes last week. That's yes. why, that's what I was doing. Yes, you were. I was. Hey, I, Heath, I know. great job on editing those two episodes, by the way. Oh, I mean, thanks, man. They thanks. were flawless. Yes, we, yeah, we get it. And, and they were, and they were, and great job and stuff. But can we get back to the subject at hand, if you, of if course. You now, at first, we considered trying to convince you that I really do just like echo when I talk and that Noah and Heath have mm-hmm. to edit it down like 50% of the content so I sound normal. But we know we've got a pretty intelligent audience. So we decided to just come clean and tell you straight out. It was Noah's fault. I- again, yes, it was, and and thank you. I should also note that as soon as I learned of the error, I took care of That's it as Subway quickly sandwich. as possible. Just, so anyone oh. who downloaded the show after 1 p.m. Eastern wouldn't have noticed the error. So only the several thousand people who downloaded it in the first five hours got the substandard product, is what you're saying. That's not a big deal. Exactly, right. yes. So, so for those of you who thought you might have been having a minor stroke 33 minutes into last week's show, I do apologize, and I promise to do everything in my power to make sure that an error like that never slips through again. After all, if you wanted low-quality dick jokes, you could just watch the GOP primary debates. And we're back for the breakdown, and this film is going to start us off watching six Confederate soldiers on horseback for a really long time, <laughs> and soak it up while you can, because it's never going to be sane again. <laughs> yeah. I wrote down, holy shit, these horses are exhausting. Imagine what communists in cars would do. <laughs> right. <laughs> It'd be terrible. And we, we learn in the credits that this is produced and created by the Ormond organization. And I want to yeah. say the Ormond organization sounds like they're going to create clones of Batman. <laughs> <laughs> when we learn that this is the Ormond organization because everyone in this production's last name is Ormond. Or Perkle, yes. <laughs> right, yeah. exactly. Who wrote and directed it. And this was apparently a book? Yes, uh, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> for a chick track or something yeah <laughs> the craziest thing the craziest thing about this movie is the very first thing that it tells us which is that all of the things in this movie are true yes <laughs> <laughs> they have yeah. already happened <laughs> apparently yeah no but then it says it's just it's it's like they're substituting with americans uh to make it like sink in because we wouldn't care if it was chinese people or something that we saw going through all this shit. Now, I want to point out my favorite moment in this entire movie, and it came very early on, um, but this is obviously just for for personal reasons. And in the credits, when they're showing their special thanks, one of the special thanks is to Bemis Road Baptist Church in Valdosta, Georgia. Hey! <laughs> Three miles from my fucking house. <laughs> just, uh. they wake up in the middle of the night and you're throwing rocks. Fuck your movie. <laughs> what are you Fuck. doing, guys? I, I'm here to put a stop to it. I'm, it's still- <laughs> oh, it's someone who saw if horsemen tire you. Just go back to sleep. Yeah, right, yeah, it exactly. It's we get this like one. once a month. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fucking, I know it was a bad movie. Yeah. <laughs> We're sorry. We've publicly apologized. <laughs> Uh, but they're still there. They're still kicking. Um, yeah, so no, the first words we hear in the movie are uh, some disembodied voice who never shows up again saying, Reverend Perkle, are the pictures we're about to see in this film true facts, or are they figments of your imagination? <laughs> to which Estes W. Perkle responds, I can document every statement that I make in this film, and all the drama- uh, I'm sorry, and all the dramatized events are taken from real events that happened in Russia, Korea, China, and Cuba. So everything you're about to hear is a true story. (laughs) Right. So when we say the crazy shit that happens in this movie, just remember that unlike every other Christian movie we've watched, they they actually think this shit happened. Yes. So every time I say something crazy, just remember the beginning, this guy basically considered himself a bibliography for everything (laughs) you're about to hear. Well, and also, and, and, and it really helps that the very first thing he says in this 1971 film is that the communists will take over the country within the next 24 months. Mm. I wrote in my notes, oh, look, 
it's a Christian who's making predictions that don't come true. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> Keep what would Jesus do, right? Um, and this is also, of course, we get our first crowd shot here because this whole movie is 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 like this guy's sermon, and we keep looking back at the crowd, and oh my fucking god, at the patterns I wrote down, this is My Little Pony vomit. Yeah. They're wearing My Little Pony vomit. <laughs> yeah, and here you have distinctive proof: not everyone in the seventies was cool. <laughs> These were the people who didn't go to Woodstock. These yeah, are the people right. who complained and let him die in the mud. <laughs> And so, the, yeah, they've got this group of extras just kind of like running around being chased by communists on horses sometimes. And they clearly told these people like a thousand times, do not look at the cameras. Don't look at the cameras. <laughs> but about half of them just cannot help themselves. They just stop like a deer, stare right at <laughs> the camera for a second and keep moving. And, and the other half are looking the opposite direction as best they can. They're doing like looking straight up with body contortions. All of a sudden they're doing astronomy in the middle of the day with the person next to them. No, I, I, and, and, and apparently the communist takeover is going to be where like everybody has to play tag against their will, but the bad guys get horses and you don't. I, right. I guess that's what we're <laughs> yes. seeing. Because there's a point in the movie, right? What first thing that happens is they're being chased and one guy stops and the guy on the horse, this is clearly yes. an accident, catches up to him and goes like, yeah. Tag, the you're in. Freeze tag. You have to get stop. Get going. You. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> And, and uh, like the guy's going on to talk about what the, uh, uh, Perkle is talking about what the communist takeover is going to be like that happens in the next 24 months, uh, before anyone here was born. And he says, many of you listening to me today will see hundreds of dead bodies on the streets of your hometown. So another, another prediction we can write down in the column, see how Perkle's doing <laughs> right. by the end but of this. But worse than that, worse than that, nobody will get vacations except for two yeah, days right. a year. Yeah, <laughs> right. The body, the streets will be littered with the bodies of dead Christians. <laughs> and they show that, by the way. They, like, this is the first time we're going to see a field of dead Christians covered in ketchup, and it will not be the last. I love Skylar on Facebook. Uh, referred to it as ketchup bukkake. That, that's, that's whole, basically, this whole movie is a ketchup bukkake porn, but fully dressed. Ketchup bukkake yeah. porn, the Eli Bosnick <laughs> Very. Sick. You should see somebody about that, seriously, Eli. That's, I will not go to the not, doctor. WebMD has already to told out. me what's wrong. <laughs> the, the herbs are working. <laughs> Also, by the way, we get a splash fight. Oh, second yes. Second week in a row. <laughs> yeah. Splash fight. Splash fight. Very exciting. <laughs> Apparently, the communists are going to make us have splash fights in a creek. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to be mean and like do it right in your eyes. You know, you might even have yeah. to take a time out for a minute because it stings a little. <laughs> terrifying stuff. Not carefree and fun like it might sound and look in this movie I made. Well, no, and also, also, he says that you won't get any days off and you'll work 15 hours a day. And I'm like... Well, when are they going to do all this splashing around with the horses then? I mean, is that their job to get chased around by these horses? This makes no fucking sense. And they clearly had to tell the extras to stop having fun with this, too. When we have the really fun splash fight, stop acting like it's fun. Yeah. All of a sudden, some it's kid just keeps running through the fight. shot. Yay, this is great. Horses splashing. Cut. Cut. What did we just say? Splash fight to the death, guys. It's a splash fight to the death. <laughs> Yeah, and speaking of death, we are going to linger on the murdered children for a little longer before we end this scene. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, and then we cut over to the hippie girl and her hippie boyfriend pulling up to <laughs> church. Yeah, like bad people do. Now, of course, the hippie <laughs> right. boyfriend isn't getting out. You right, know, of the, course not. She's going to church and she's like, pick me up later. I've got to maintain appearances and make people think I'm a Christian, even though I don't really love Jesus. I'm yeah. an evil character. Yeah. Right. <laughs> if, if this movie was made 15 years later, her first line in the movie would have been, uh, so here we are at the church, both with AIDS from the gays and the blacks. I'm going to go inside <laughs> and lick everyone's scabs. <laughs> pick me up later. Now, unfortunately, she was fucking adorable. So I have no jokes about how she looks. I wrote, was, yeah, I wrote, look, <laughs> I don't know how to say this. She looks like Lucinda. <laughs> she lo really looks like Lucinda. I was yeah, like, kinda, does yeah. Lucinda have a sister she doesn't talk to? Because I don't want to. I don't want to mix family and business. She looks really, really similar to Lucinda in a lot of disturbing ways. So all my notes are like, just want to check. Like we're all having fun, but like you guys are eighties. That's not Lucinda, right? Like, this is I know you just had your birthday and everything. So like maybe this is how y'all met. I'm just saying, if I see the back of some long hair on someone's head, I'm turning the movie off. 
I just wrote that she looks like Marianne from Gilligan's Island. She looked a lot, and not like with like a disease or <laughs> or like a cooking process or something. No, she just looks like Marianne. Well, yeah. right now that's so fucked up because Eli said he, he, that she looks like my wife. So now nobody who had any notes about what she looks like could say it. You know, you have to be like, she looked just fine. I just she removed looked- the disease in the cooking process. <laughs> right, exactly, <laughs> <For> exactly. <my> <laughs> So, yeah, so this is about the time in the movie that you realize, if you don't know going in, that this is just a ranting crazy person and that's all it will ever be. Mm -hmm. And the first part of his rant is, you know how terrible people are these days? The other day, a woman came to church. She was wearing a short skirt and everyone screamed at her. That's her fault. Yeah, because her (laughs) skirt was only 12 inches above her knees. Right. Well, and he's also, he's like... He's like, what do you all want most in the whole wide world? Many of you will say, I want my kids to be Christians. Many of you will say, I don't want my kids to fuck anybody before they're married. <laughs> and like, but those are terrible answers. Like, if that's, that's what you most give a fuck about, holy shit, you're horrible people. Right. Right. Also, just a quick note. He's talking about how, like, kids today have all sorts of rock and roll music and bad and whatever, whatever. Right. And he, ex- he explains two things. We used to have fun playing Drop the Handkerchief. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is Drop the Handkerchief? That's a tag game. I looked this up, actually. <laughs> oh, God. I looked this up. It's a tag game. You all stand in a circle, and one person goes behind the circle and secretly drops a handkerchief behind somebody and then they run. It's like duck, duck, goose basically with a handkerchief. Yeah. Well, how do you know who's dropped a handkerchief? You, you have what no is idea. this fucking it, Jedi it, training? It, no, it's, <laughs> it's nothing. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, he's talking about, he's like, um, when my daddy was coming up in North Georgia, they didn't have none of these fancy video games. They played Connect the Measles and liked it fine. In fact, they had the McGuffey Reader. The McGuffey Reader. Uh, we go into a love letter about the fucking McGuffey Reader. Because the McGuffey Reader taught values. I Googled it. I was like, oh, I wonder what the McG- The McGuffey Reader is like hat and sat and cat and bat. I'm like, what are the fucking values of the McGuffey rhyming? <laughs> yeah. So I, I actually looked up McGuffey too. And, um, the guy who, who wrote these, he set up some frontier schools during the early 1800s in Ohio. And, and also, according to Wikipedia, he worked 11 hours a day and six days a week, which Communist. is impressive. <laughs> <laughs> he only took two vacation days a day. Yeah. It was to praise Fidel Castro. <laughs> yeah, that, right. You got it. And by the way, these books still sell. They sell about 30,000 copies a year. Well, there it's, you go. Yeah, it's the Texas school curriculum right there. That's, that's his, That was probably in his will, like that all of his money would be used to buy 30,000 McGuffey readers a year uh, <laughs> in perpetuity. So, yeah, the problem with kids these days is that they don't see enough dicks run. And, and, <laughs> and instead, what I guess the teachers are teaching instead, according to Perkle, is um having sex, premarital sex specifically. Yes, because we now cut to <laughs> Haley Joel Osment dressed up as a grown-up. <laughs> <laughs> right. He looks like a baby that's hiding from the cops. <laughs> and the thing that this character says is, now, boys and girls, I've told you premarital sex is necessary. Yep. We're now going to go... And I wrote in my notes, well, look at that. I agree with a part of this movie. That's weird. <laughs> He then goes, now I'm going to go over the seven erogenous zones. And I wrote in my notes, and then they cut away, of course. And I go, what the first one? Fuck, I could have learned something. (laughs) Right, right. And he even goes, and the first one is dot, dot, dot. Yeah, this was pre-internet. So, so Eli, just for the record, just remember biplane. Breasts, Mm -hmm. inner thigh, pussy, lips, asshole, (laughs) neck, and ears. But not in that order. Wait, really? Run into a plane. Yeah, That's, well, not in that order, but yeah. Why didn't we have this class? We should have this class. Right. Like, teenage boys, class. I was we in need there. to they learn. Told me pot was going to kill me. Why couldn't I have gotten the biplane class? <laughs> we need to learn. That's a more useful thing. Yeah, the seven erotic. Are you kidding? I thought it was just the ass until I saw that Friends episode. Yeah. <laughs> Courtney Cox giving that fantasy play about 246. Seven, seven gallons. 246. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and so, and then he cuts, it cut, we cut back to, from the teacher, we cut back to Perkle. Um, and, and he's saying now, the second footman is the TV. So I guess the first was the lack of the McGuffey reader, but the second is the TV. Now, you mothers might be thinking that them Saturday morning cartoons are wholesome. I wrote in my notes, it's like, now you're going after conjunction junction? <laughs> well, this is where we learn that Saturday morning cartoons, quote, lead your child into crime, oh, yes. sex, 
and murder. And I was like, man, I missed that episode of Looney Tunes. Right. I was watching the wrong cartoons. I mean, look, I saw Pepe Le Pew, so it's very pro-rape. But other than that, I, didn't, I missed the I missed the robbery and the murder. I, I, if he had said rape, we really can't argue with him. Pepe Le Pew, he rapes yeah. all those cats. <laughs> he rapes he a rapes lot of cats. the shit out of those cats. And we got to live with that. We all sat there and watched. And said nothing. We're like the guys in the bar at the Jodie Foster movie. We watched. <laughs> Pepe Le Pew just throw those cats onto a pinball machine. I feel so uncomfortable <laughs> laughing at this. <laughs> Although if somebody has video of Pepe Le Pew throwing a cat down on the uh, pinball machine, like I would, I would watch that video. Yeah. Um, he also says that since television was introduced in some areas, crime has increased a thousand percent. A thousand percent. <laughs> yes. The two-year-old version of telling you how much things have gotten bigger by, I would say I'm like 85,000 percent taller. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it really pisses him off the thing that curbed all those crime numbers was legal abortion, huh? <laughs> right. um, yeah, but apparently the problem is that children would rather watch TV than read the Bible. So I, I'm sorry that Porky never offered Petunia up to a rape mob and then chopped her into bacon to mail around Acme <laughs> Luniversity like a fucking book full of morals and shit would have. But uh, <laughs> billionaire money, we're going to make that cartoon. <laughs> Already working on it. Um, they, they, they say, they say, they say, they say, they say I can offer up my d d daughters instead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as long as you don't fuck my angels, it's fine. <laughs> That's what matters. Um, also, also, and his list of um, uh, things that are ruining America is the drive-in theater. Yeah, they are yeah. spawning houses for sex. Right. <laughs> like, what else would a spawning house be for? <laughs> that's Fish. that's just redundant. <laughs> yeah. Uh and then of course because this movie was crazy but not next level crazy, we learned that dancing is wrong. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> the bad guy in Footloose. That's yes, the narrator yeah. of this movie. They will make a movie about me one day about how dancing is illegal and I'll be that good guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe Dan Ronald Reagan could play me. Because <laughs> dancing Lithgow. leads to adultery. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. So married people dance with other people and <laughs> fuck them. This this is these damn kids today with their long hair devil music, the movie. Yeah. That is clearly yeah. what we're watching and it just slowly dawns on you that you're never going to watch anything else as long as this running time goes on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Also, um, we have to worry about the liquor traffic. Apparently 75% of our children are drinking before they finish high school. Yeah. <laughs> And by the way, I should point out that Lucinda, throughout this entire film, is fantasizing about all of the things that he says. <laughs> yes. So he's like, eh, they, they get a flash shot of her thinking about dancing and laughing, uh -huh. and then there's a shot of her smoking and drinking. Right. <laughs> yeah. To the Wayne's World imagination music, yeah. by the way. Yeah. There's, there's a fantasy flashback of her doing like... All 18 things you might do in a coffee shop during like a three second shot. <laughs> right. Cigarette, <laughs> sip, napkin, stir, sugar, <laughs> second cigarette, <laughs> stone. Just relax. It's like Mormon reefer madness in a coffee shop. They're just going crazy with caffeine. She's, uh, she's also checking her watch and so am I. Holy shit. It was only like eight minutes in at this point. Um, I also love he, he said at one point, there are even those of us today that would dare to advocate for legalizing marijuana. And yeah, I just came back from Colorado, and I'm all the more advocating <laughs> with a backpack for, uh... full. <laughs> hey, shh, shh. Sorry, with a backpack full of memories. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I took only pictures. Um, so Seeds. yeah, and then we also get uh, magazines. He throws magazines under the bus. All right, forty percent of veterans are addicted to drugs. Uh, right, because uh, because <laughs> apparently preachers allowed divorced people. To get married. And if that yeah. sentence doesn't make sense to you, you're right, but that's what he says. So it's not, <laughs> it's not our fault. We don't be like, oh, Eli, at Eli, how come you got, no, I didn't write the movie. This guy wrote the movie. He's fucking crazy. And this is when I realized, oh, this movie is just going to be stream of consciousness from this man. Yes. <laughs> Exemplified by videos. So strap in. We got 12 minutes more. It's six minutes long. So that's the only good thing. I can say about it. Right. Yeah. It's oh, like dude, it's, it's got a 52-minute running time, and I swear if it was any longer, fucking Google Docs would not have room for all the notes we would have. We've got like 25 <laughs> pages of notes on a 52-minute movie here. Yeah. 
So now we learn that the big problem is that people don't have time to go to church these days. And they're spending their Sundays joyriding, apparently, yes. Yeah, and so he points out that men just drop their families off at church and then go off on their own. <laughs> yes, and when will they be sorry? When communism takes over America. <laughs> That's a goddamn quote. Yeah, also... This is one of my favorite lines, probably my favorite line in a movie. Less than 60 years ago, there wasn't one communist in the world. And I'm like, <laughs> why, yeah, man? They hadn't written the book yet. Like In 1911? Yeah, um, the Communist Manifesto was published in 1848. Right. So, so <laughs> pretty sure there were communists using that word before 19... 19- also, I'm, Jesus was a communist. Right, right. I was going to say, how about the but apostles? The idea existed for, for a long time. <laughs> right. <laughs> Nope, they were something else at the time. I also love, and this is such a minor thing, and there's so much major shit in this movie, so I don't know why I'm chasing down a minor thing. But he says, it'll happen with jet-aged speed. And I'm thinking to myself, like, there was always something that was that, you know? Like, (laughs) jet-aged sounds pretty stupid now, but, you know, then it was (laughs) space-age, and then it was digital-age. But, but, like, I'm reminded of quotes where, like, people are saying, but now we live in the age of steam, because that was high-tech. Anyway, yeah, that was a fun... think at one point they were like, and now it, Paul runs as fast as he can speed. Yeah. Just like when they were, <laughs> just like Paul the fast guy. <laughs> oh, Paul the fast guy speed. All right. So, so as we're going on about the com, the imminent communist takeover that's going to happen any minute now, he says, one day you will wake up to hear this on your television. And now we see a guy who looks like a genetic hybrid of Howard Cosell and Ricky Gervais as Derek telling everybody (laughs) about the fucking communist takeover that just happened. Yeah, he looks like the twin that Walter Cronkite absorbed in the womb. (laughs) (laughs) And by the way, this is the most Ed Wood moment in the entire movie. Their news set for this guy is just this guy sitting in front of a random map. There's just a map in the, I think it's of the Caucasus mountain region or something like that, but it's just a a fucking map on the wall and a sports coat. That is the news desk in this movie. And he announces the entire government's been killed. Like the president's been killed and several governors of states have been killed (laughs) and that people are being herded into the street and machine gunned down like cattle, which raises the question, who is doing the machine gunning? Look, this movie doesn't make a lot of sense, but I had to watch it anyways. So the question occurred to me, when the communists take over, do they mean like they're literally going to come here and take over? No, like a were... Red Dawn situation? Or will like <laughs> random people turn into communists a they... la werewolves? <laughs> <laughs> no, they already are. It's like sleeper cells. Oh, I they get it. They were already oh, okay. there. They were hiding everywhere amongst us. Just ask McCarthy. He would have jerked off to this movie in yeah. a heartbeat if I he lived it. a little longer. Like that um, Jewish lawyer, Alger Hiss, who totally turned out to be a communist. <laughs> <laughs> What was he building? A clock? Jer- yeah, no. Jury's exactly. still out on that. Jury's still out on that. <laughs> and, and by the way, the the news guy is announcing. He said specifically that the president, the secretary of state, and the speaker of the house were killed. Mm-hmm. So, just for the record, that means in 1970 when they made this, that Spiro Agnew would become president. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what the communists wanted. Yeah, wanted right. <laughs> Richard Nixon's more conservative number two. Yeah. Right, so then we get some more catch-up children. Right. I yeah. wrote my notes at this on. point. Oh, I get it. This movie is the experience of being trapped in a room with a crazy homeless guy, <laughs> but you never get to walk away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm volunteering to talk to a crazy homeless guy. <laughs> oh, yes, and you never get to try to change the subject or anything. Yeah, so that, well, there's also, by the way, we learned that the communists are going to kill anyone over 30. Yay, I so. live... I'm fucked. Yeah, yeah, you'll have to carry the show on on your own. <laughs> Here on Communist Awful Movies. <laughs> <laughs> Battleship Potemkin again. Um, so now, uh, so now we get another like cutaway scene from the preacher bitching about the kids these days. Um, this time it's communist horsemen rounding up children. And of course, this is where I first wrote my notes. Why aren't the communists using cars? I mean, we will have cars. We could run over them and their horses. (laughs) But then a truck pulls up to grab the kids that they're kidnapping. So they are using cars. So the guy in the truck just had to ride real slow behind the people on the horses. 
all the way down to this fucking house. Do you guys house, maybe apparently. want to move the horses into the? No, it's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> no, it would fuck up the title, guys. It would totally fuck up the title. Right. And so Jeremiah said horses. They pull up to this house, and everyone just stares at each other for <laughs> approximately 112 hours. <laughs> they just stare. I have come too quickly and had a less awkward moment than this family is having with these communist leaders. They're all speaking in nods and shit. Yeah, exactly. And cringes. I wrote in my notes, God damn, someone say sup. <laughs> right. How you guys doing? That's a, that's a nice horse. Something. Yeah, anything. But no, they they wordlessly pick up the two kids that are on the porch and put them in the, in the kid truck. Like a, yeah, a really small pickup truck. Yeah. They're going to take like three or four kids at a time. <laughs> it's going to be really slow, but they're right. going to take away all the kids. Well, like, they also a have to wait for the horses. So yeah, it's going to take forever. <laughs> And then mom gets all upset. Right. She starts to scream and cry and pole dance on her porch. <laughs> she just swings around her pole like she's trying to get your last four ones that you've stuffed <laughs> in your back pocket. And so the communist guy turns around. And she, by the way, the mom looks like she has downs. Yes, that is she the does. largest forehead I've ever seen <laughs> on a human. On a human. We should aim satellites that crash to Earth at it. <laughs> I'm not sure why, but, you know, it, we could. We could. Um, yeah, so the communist gets upset at her for crying and shoots her, and it's spectacular. <laughs> yeah. And she she just dies on the, the pole dancing column there for about yeah. five minutes of movie, <laughs> just, just slowly sliding, sliding down, down with the blood. The only piece of direction anyone in this movie got was, guys, if you fall down, don't do it too hard. We don't want anybody to hurt themselves. Yeah. Right. Everyone lowers themselves to the ground like me doing a push-up. It's like, all right, here we go, getting in shape. No more flabby, getting ready for Abby. All right, I'm on the ground and I'm asleep. No, Sam Harris. All right, fine. And then we get, for the first time in this movie, the close-up of the communist's face. Oh, my God. It's okay. Here's all I can say. You gotta take Wario, and then a witch turns him into a rapist. That's what the communist looks. It's Wario, but rapier. And Wario's pretty rapey. Like, Already, you don't have to yeah. stretch your imagination to be like, Wario raped someone. You wouldn't be surprised. You'd be like, yeah, I get it. It's rapier Wario. Wario. <laughs> Rapey Wario. Okay, I'll see if I can the say Eli that. It's kind of a, it's kind of a tongue twister, but we'll see if we can get. So I so, always use Mario Kart. Rapey so, Wario. <laughs> so um, now the a uh, Perkle who is kind of narrating through this whole thing or whatever, uh, warns us that the communists are masters at brainwashing. The preacher who is using fear to tell children to love Jesus. Warns us how good the communists are at brainwashing. Yeah, and, and by the way, it's Hispanic Burt Reynolds who's going to be the new Sunday school <laughs> yeah. teacher. I had uh, evil cheats, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. And he won't always drink beer, but when he does, <laughs> he'll prefer a Dos Equis. <laughs> Most certainly. So he's, he's quite an interesting man. So we get this shot of uh, of evil cheats sitting around with a bunch of kids going, uh, it, and the we haven't talked about the accents yet in this movie. How the fuck have we? Oh, because nobody's spoken yet. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I think this is the first time we get one of these ridiculous, like just anything but American that they can do accents. Yeah. So the guy says, "We will talk about your Jesus Christ." Yeah. <laughs> he also calls everyone comrade, but not in the way that the communists use comrade. He'd just be like, "Comrade David, what's going on? <laughs> comrade teacher, com <laughs> there's not." That's not how it was used. Sorry. So, yeah, he introduces that they're going to talk about Jesus, and he has all the kids who believe in Jesus and that believe Jesus can answer prayers raise, raise their, their hand. hand. Yeah, exactly. And they all do. Right. And then he says that we're all going to pray for some candy, and they yeah. all do. <laughs> and then he goes, the Jesus does not bring candy. The communist leader, Fidel Castro, provides candy. And then a guy walks in. This is my favorite thing that's ever happened in the world. With a garbage bag full of candy. And he goes, look, have as much as you like. And all the kids are like, yeah, Jesus is alive. <laughs> right. Bit of honey or something. I just pictured it's David so Silverman at home going, really? All those years? This is what I did to do? I wrote a whole book 
I talked to Megyn <laughs> Kelly. I went on Bill O'Reilly. Why couldn't I? Oh, fuck. He's just filling, up was... with, just filling up bags of candy in his house. All right, great. Jesus, pray for candy. Then Fidel Castro. Does it have to be Fidel Castro? He's dead now. It's fine. I, you know, I'll wing it. I'll wing it. <laughs> well, now, but at first, though, I thought it was pretty good because he says, you know, do you believe Jesus can answer prayers? Pray for candy. You ain't got no candy. Boom. We're done, right? You know, and I thought, wow, it really is that easy, though, isn't it? You know, and so I wrote, good one, evil Cheech. But then his minion brings him candy, and I'm like, but see, now you could just it say, works. Jesus, <laughs> we prayed, to you, and you did get candy. So you <laughs> fucked up your own thing there. Jesus but. made Fidel Castro. Oh, yeah, right, exactly. Really smart, apologetics kid, five years old. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so yeah, so then we cut back to Perkles, who, who is saying, quote, imagine substituting Fidel Castro for Jesus. Now, I, I should point out, okay, so a little behind the curtain kind of thing here. When we do our notes, usually Eli watches the movie first, and he'll have a little cue so that we'll have like a, you know, what line is does this scene start on? So we're all working from the same page. And this is the only movie where the actual line cues are the same as the notes. <laughs> it's just the shit that we happens in the notes. movie is the notes. <laughs> <laughs> so... We're just reading the script. Yeah, right? that's right. what we're all looking at right Pretty now is the script. It. So he talks more about how um, you know the communists will work the children in the fields all day, which is not a problem, by the way. It's not a pro- he goes. They'll make them work in the fields, which, by the way, we all agree kids should yeah, work well, in the yeah. fields, but not for too long. Come on, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and even the white ones, I mean, come on. And so we also see here, now we cut to this scene where this, like the evil communist guy, the uh, rapist Wario, finds a <laughs> preacher in the field churching. Right. But they're not like hiding. They're just there. No. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> kind of out in the open. By the way, I figured out his accent. The the communist soldier, he has a communist accent. Oh, it's a commie oh. accent. That- Switch. Yeah, it switches between Russian, Cuban, and Chinese, so it just rotates. Well, there's yeah. definitely some German in there because he has the 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 wavy or the not the the other way. He does the V to the W and the W to the V, and so it's it's really fucking weird. Um, so yeah, yeah, and and uh, so he gathers everybody up, and, he, and he's like, "Which of these parents was teaching the children Christianity?" And uh, the one guy raises his he hand. That's exactly. Like so they. That, though. Catch up him in the stomach. Right. Yeah, this is not me doing <laughs> yeah, a bad accent. This is me doing a good version of his accent, I do believe. Yeah. And then we get like what might be, God, it's so hard to say, the most fucked up moment in this movie. I just, I want, I want you to <laughs> empathize with us right now because you're about to hear what we're going to say. It's like trying to describe a blowjob to a baby. <laughs> what I'm about, what we're about to tell you about, I'm like, no, take that out of your mouth. Or maybe leave it in. This might help. I want you to know how great this thing is, but I have no way to tell well, you. I, no, it's, 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 it's kind of like describing ear rape to a baby. I'll just say that. Go ahead. <laughs> because they choose, they now decide, the communists now decide they're going to puncture the eardrums. <laughs> Of the, the children kids who that heard, have heard the, the word of Jesus. Yes. And we watch them do that. Right. Well, we watch him like have a stick and go at the kid's head and the kid's like, oh, mister, stop it. <laughs> and then we cut away. Yes. And when we cut back, the kid has a stick hanging out of both ears. <laughs> yeah. Like he the pushed fucking all the way arrow through. through the head. Yes. Guys. <laughs> the high point of this movie is a little boy. With two sticks, stick very clearly hung in his ears, and and then he spits, like, cream of mushroom soup out. (laughs) And I wrote in my notes, that's literally the craziest thing I've ever seen. I had to pause the movie and just scream. I was just screaming in my apartment alone. I watched this at, like, three in the afternoon on a Tuesday, and I was just like, "Ah!" I'm just screaming because the wa- just ah! <laughs> this will definitely be the weirdest thing that you will have ever seen for the next forty or thirty eight minutes of runtime, depending on where this was exactly. Uh, yeah, got to unwind and watch some Clockwork Orange or something, <laughs> right? Well, yeah, because immediately after that, they then drag the girl that was there into the woods to rape her, right? And it, and we cut right back to uh, to Perkle, and he's like. 
You think that these images are shocking? Well, there's more <laughs> shocking yet to come. Right. And they like to strip a woman naked, tie her head to one Jeep and her legs to another Jeep <laughs> and pull her limb from limb. What the fuck That's is that what all communists, about? yeah, they draw and have women <laughs> with Jeeps. In Again, just countries. a reminder, remember at the beginning I made such a big deal? He thinks all of this is true. Yes. He believes all of this is true. <laughs> well, you know what? Like, I'm sure that there is some example of that having happened once in Russia or China or something like that. But we could also talk about all the fucked up crazy shit that Christians did when they right. took over countries but as well. it's not policy. There was no yeah, part right, of it. Right, right. It's yeah, not totally. page 27, how to tie a head to a Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> Bad stuff that happens in a country are not the laws of the country. Yes, right, right, exactly. <laughs> I'd be like looking at Jeffrey Dahmer and saying, well, in this Christian country, there was a guy who was eating gay people in a freezer. Yeah. Um, so, and, and they keep flashing back to the pews, right? As he's, as he's preaching all of this to remind us that he's telling these stories to children, right? Not just in like this fictional world that we're creating in this movie, but this is like a thing that he tells to children for a living. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> And by the way, the communist accent guy is Nathan Detroit from Guys and Dolls. Now, he's, he's <laughs> over. It's- right? Okay, so yeah, now we gotta we, we've got to take a step down into this movie um, because this is where he says, and I quote: "Perhaps the worst thing these communists like to do to Christian girls is make them into playthings for their soldiers, as we shall see in this documented incident." Mm-hmm. So we cut to what we're being promised is. This in- documented incident of a woman being raped by a communist. Right. So 1950s Lady Gaga is at home. That's what she looks like. That's if you want an image. She looks she's like my high school girlfriend, but knitting. that doesn't help anybody but me. Yes. Yeah, so, well, like, yeah, she's making a dress like all good women do. It actually was Noah's high school girlfriend, but that's fine. We don't <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> she's knitting. And her, she like shows that, that none of these people know how to act. I know I talk about it all the time, but like when you leave these people alone on camera, they all fucking panic. This woman and her husband, especially, she's like knitting and he's like knitting. And then <laughs> communist guy stumbles up to the door drunk. This is rapist Wario yeah, again. Rapist yes. Wario, who's literally about to rape someone. So yeah, right, know. right. He opens the door and he's like, comrade, comrade, comrade. I learned the word comrade for this part. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Vodka. That was. So this he's Russian. way too Russian, dude. I'm sorry. Can you try that again, but in a communist accent? <laughs> hey, comrade. I'm just sitting on my own nuts to try and get that accent. I've just shifted my weight slightly onto my nuts. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, the, the drunk communist soldier shows up to rape the wife. And I love how the woman has to belong to a man in order for this rape thing to really stick for the for the target audience. Yeah, because the nineteen fifties guy is like, no, now come on, now I was raping that. He's, <laughs> he's also wearing mom jeans. I just want to throw that out there. He's wearing the highest, flattest, poofiest pair of jeans you ever wished for. Thirty thirty five pleats. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> strong strong jeans. So yeah, so he tries to stand up to his wife, but rapist Wario waves his gun near the guy's head, which causes him to go unconscious by first going down on all fours and then laying over <laughs> very slowly again very slowly imagine eli doing a burpee there you go you got it. Yeah. i'm going to stay here you yeah. can count the whole hour half a one half a one right <laughs> yeah so then you know, we get this like flash cut back and forth as the hairy chested rapist wario guy stalks ever closer to uh to 50s lady gaga and um yeah it's the prima nocta thing that's that's part of it <laughs> was- carl marx wrote all about <laughs> the prima nocta thing early on a very important portion of the uh of the manifesto i do believe so while we contemplate the eternity through which hairy chested italian mexican slavic porn star (laughs) rape gaze will haunt our nightmares we'll pause for a well-earned break but before we do let me give act three the hard sell here it's even fucking crazier than acts one and two there you go that is the hardest sell that i have holy shit and now selections from the mcguffey reader Jane loves Jesus. 
See Jane Jesus. Go away, Jane. Your devil flap is bleeding. Run, Tommy, run. Run fast, Tommy. The Jews are coming, present participle. Brian can sit. Can Brian sit? Brian has trouble sitting because he had Chipotle for lunch. No more Chipotle for Brian. Thank you, Dr. William Lane Craig. Next up, Mr. Eli Bosnick will have 10 minutes. Timekeeper, are we ready? And you may begin. Thank you. <clears throat> Does Jesus have candy? Fidel Castro has candy. Look at all this candy. Thank you. I'll never give up my Christianity. Well then, comrade Lucinda, we will have no choice but to tear you from limb to limb. Tie her head to the jeep. Uh, yeah, about that. Uh, how are we planning I don't, I don't know. To... Tie her head to the jeep and her body to the other jeep. Yeah, there's just a whole bunch of logistical stuff here. Like, like her head? Mm -hmm. I yeah. mean, I, I, we can put a noose around her neck and then a noose around like her ankles. Honestly, I think that's just ripping her head off. I don't think. Yeah, that absolutely. Also, how do we tie her body to a jeep? What What do we do with the? I think if you tie my feet to the hitch and the noose thing, that should do it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I see that. I see that. Thank oh, you. I can, I can by the way, that, yeah. no problem. Team player. And we're back. And when we last saw our hero, we were watching a movie that had a hero in it. But in this movie. Greasy porn Boris just raped my high school girlfriend, and Estes <laughs> Perkle still hasn't run out of communist plots to warn us about. <laughs> um, now, I love to, like, the very next scene here, he's asking his congregation, he's like, uh, how many of you believe in the immortality of the soul? And, of course, everybody raises their hand, but 1970s Lucinda can't quite do it. She's, like, kind of <laughs> yeah. half-ass raises her hand. I don't know about all that shit. But she doesn't look like she's not sure. She looks like she's not sure how to raise her hand. <laughs> <laughs> she looks like she wants to, but she's like, is it to the, is it, is it through my chest? Is that... <laughs> Well, <laughs> which one's hand raising? Everything she does in the movie is like that. Because at like at one point she's supposed to look like she's nodding off, and she looks like she's rubbing her bean. I, I mean, there's just <laughs> at no point in this movie does her like does her expression and action match the things she's supposed to be doing. It's phenomenal. So uh, then we oh oh then then we get statistics. We get some yeah, yeah. biblical <laughs> statistics. <laughs> yes. he when the communists took over, they killed, and I wrote these down. Three million Christians in Korea, mm -hmm. 20 million Christians in Russia, 50 million Christians in China. Yes. 50 million <laughs> Christians in China. And when Christianity took over, they killed all the non-white people they could find, pretty much. <laughs> so there's also that. Right. I don't remember this part of the, the Bible. We just read. I don't remember right. like a he says biblical Christian statistics, death he? toll from the communist takeover. I do not remember that section. So, and of course, we're looking at more ketchup covered children here. And then he offers up this quote. He says, uh, one of the leading communists of the day said, and I quote, I dream of a day when the last congressman is strangled to death with the guts of the last preacher and the Christians love blood so much. So now why should we should give it? OK, I'm not quoting anymore, but that's the quote he throws out. Right. Right. Which is an, a bastardization of the Diderot quote. Yeah, right. Uh, which is man will never be free until the last blah, last blah. king is strangled. With, yeah, exactly. But OK, so I had to look this up. And every time I dug into anything in this movie, it was just a boundless well of more shit. This honestly could be a <laughs> trilogy. We could have done three movies or three episodes just on this 52 minute movie. OK, so here's where that quote comes from. It's falsely attributed to Gus Hall, who was the former leader of the Communist Party of the USA, by a guy named Kenneth Goff. OK, so now Goff is a crazy Christian anti-communist preacher just like Perkle who says he was a member of the Communist Party for three years like that one guy said he was a Satanist so that he can like really scare people with it. Now, Right, so it's the P.Z. Myers school of Christopher Hitchens <laughs> biology. Fake Mets fan calling up the Yankee radio station, yeah. Right, right. So I, I – and of course I had to dig into this golf guy. No, so in, in addition to his claims about what Gus Hall said in a secret meeting that only he recorded – um, where, okay, these are other claims that this guy made in writing, in his books. The Holocaust never happened. 
water fluoridation is a communist plot to make us more docile. That one's true. Hitler was a Jewish communist, was still alive in the 70s, as, and was going to rise up to lead the communist revolution worldwide. Uh, dubious. And that hippies and desegregation were a communist plot. Okay, that is where Perkle is getting the information that he is relaying to <laughs> us from. Okay, now say all the crazy stuff that Goff said that wasn't true. <laughs> <laughs> just, like, then people will be confused. Yeah. Because... <laughs> right. Well, he also the said Holocaust. that he also said that jet fuel did burn that hot. So, oh, okay. yeah, that's ah, crazy mother. Full of shit. He said vaccines were safe. He said all kind of crazy shit. Because Jews don't burn that hot. <laughs> Believe me, I know. I put my hand on the stove the other day, and I didn't oh, instantly God. turn to ash. <laughs> Your turn, Jews. Oh, <laughs> didn't have enough gasoline. A lot of science in the Quran. I don't like. Oh, Jesus, that was good. God damn it. I should have been laughing. I'm sorry. That took a second. I apologize. That was good shit. Um, all right. Now we've got to move on. Just, my joke would just be such a letdown after that one. So then we cut to the communist DMV doing a house call. So, okay. So Pergle also warns us that when the communists take over, there's going to be a shit ton of paperwork, y'all. There's going to be. Oh, my God. So if you're a capitalist and a Christian, the paperwork oh, yeah. is going to be so long, like multiple <laughs> pages. You have no triplicate. idea. This is a quote. If you are a Christian, they're going to want to know everything you've done since you were five. Everything. So before you're five, you can just like whatever you want. You have fucking go to whatever. <laughs> but after you're five, that's when they start counting. And literally, we see this played out where they go. They're doing their communist accents, and they go, "Here, take this single piece of paper and, and write down every end quote everything you have said and done <laughs> this piece since of you were paper. five. Now, and instead of dwelling on how impossible that is, Tommy, it's a, it's a family and Tommy's the boy, um, he says, well, what if I was not a Christian and I wasn't a capitalist? Would the paperwork be shorter? And he's like, well, yes. And then, of course, the mom and the, and the sister are like, Tommy, you couldn't deny Jesus, could you? <laughs> right. But they're also, they're stage whispering in front of the cops. <laughs> right. like, right. They're like, Tommy, you are a Christian. He's like, I know I'm a Christian. I'm going to lie to them and tell them I'm not them. <laughs> His hands on the wrong side of his mouth. 1950s Peter Laurie here. Yeah, right. <laughs> and mom, like, insists that he gets murdered for Jesus like a good boy. Yeah. Um, but he doesn't. He says he's not a Christian, and he's not a capitalist, and he's not a Christian either. That's actually his line. Mm -hmm. Which means he has to shoot his mom. <laughs> right. Yeah. Shoot so his mom. You go for the short paperwork, you also have to shoot. I get it. I get it. That's how they get you. <laughs> That's how you, uh, you want to go for that short paperwork. <laughs> Yeah, no, wait. On the last census visit, I did take the long form, and I would have shot my mom if no, they let yeah. me not do the long. <laughs> well, no. So yeah, that's what he says. He's like, "Oh, I understand that you're not a Christian, but your mother, she is. So you take this gun and you shoot at your mother. <laughs> yeah, like too wild and crazy." <laughs> 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 oh my god, I just realized. Arrow through the head, weird right? accent. Yes! They've taken Steve Martin's career. <laughs> <laughs> now we know where Steve got all his ideas. <laughs> yeah. In, in, in what I would call, um, just about a perfect, uh, German Cuban American Bond villain accent. He says, <laughs> she is a diseased animal and, uh, she must be slaughtered like any disease. The actor really went for it here. He <laughs> really, really, like, so it was nice to see a little hustle out there, you know? But, but you don't slaughter all disease. Like, my cat has in, uh, like, uh, like, uh, diabetes. I mean, I'm not slaughtering him. <laughs> like, what the, f I, anyway, yeah, yeah, again, like, why go for the little shit in this movie? Cat, though, I'm picturing Wilford cat. Brimley wearing cat ears wandering around your apartment. <laughs> no one has the heart to tell you. Meow. <laughs> meow, Noah, meow. He's about the I'm right size right for meow. that. Yeah, yeah, they're about equivalent in mass. And then we get, I fucking kid you not, the torture montage. Right. The torture montage. But I should point out, everyone here is stupid. So their tortures are... Like what a child would think of <laughs> right. based on how the word torture sounds. <laughs> like how yeah. adults say the word like, oh, torture sounds bad. <laughs> I bet they, and this is a real one, <laughs> make you stand seven inches from the wall. <laughs> yeah. But for a long time, though. Because yeah. your eyes unfocused. <laughs> 
<laughs> Com- communists torture a lot worse than we get tortured here. Yeah. Oh yeah. Stand near a wall. They'll tap you lightly on the elbow, but like right on the funny bone every <laughs> time. The they give you, you no salt. water, and then they pour salt <laughs> in your mouth. <laughs> You'll I be, was like, if he says noogies, I'm going to kill well, myself. He'll <laughs> tie you to a porch. You'll be fed one potato chip. One! <laughs> it's like the Holocaust. <laughs> you have to sit in the comfy chair. Um, and he goes, do these things some, seem unreal? Yes, as does these things <laughs> seem unreal. Let me think of some different ones, though. Um, oh, yeah? Well, a friend of yes, mine yes. totally got tortured, and he says, he says, really, what's his name? Um... It's not important. You don't, you don't know him. He, he moved, <laughs> he moved right before y'all got here. Canada. <laughs> <laughs> you can't trust secondhand motivated anecdotes. What can you trust? So yeah, he knew a guy who said a thing. The Christianity story. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> also, um, one other phase of the torture was the uh rope swing oh torture. god jesus okay <laughs> and before we even describe what this is i'm, I'm sorry Heath, i'll let you go on but i just want to un- let everyone understand we linger on this for about nine fucking minutes <laughs> yeah <laughs> no and the actor's just like on a rope swing like we yep. rope swing <laughs> cut cut you're getting tortured what did we just say <laughs> Sorry, sorry. So the torture here is apparently they tie the guy up to a tree and they stick a bunch of pitchforks in the ground right underneath him and they make his kids hold him on the rope and then drop him on the pitchforks and then pull him back up and drop him Multiple on the Multiple times. Yeah, like seven or eight <laughs> times. And we watch it like seven or eight times while tubby Chinese uh, uh, communist laughs on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. At this point, my notes for this movie are just the things in this movie. (laughs) Why would you need to do more? Yeah, you're just making work for yourself. And the next torture, after we just saw the pitchfork torture, is (laughs) sitting on... Benches with no cushions. Yeah. Sitting on benches with no cushions. My <laughs> God, they showed this film to children. Yeah. You monsters. Did he think he was topping the pitchfork? Because <laughs> yeah. yeah. he actually with... says this. Goes, I get it. I mean, you're in a church. You've been listening to this guy blather on for 25 <laughs> minutes. The only comfort you have is a cushion. And he's like, imagine if you didn't have a cushion right now. And they're like, that's fucking horrible. <laughs> Let's go kill that Russian family. Yeah, the, the way he transitions to this, he goes, does everything I just say sound stupid about the rope swing torture? <laughs> the next issue I'd like to talk about is how communism will completely undermine proper lumbar support. <laughs> Moving Again, on. It's, it's in if you Marx's thought it was book. ridiculous, let's bring this back down to earth. <laughs> right. Stools and benches are un-American. <laughs> Right. And this is where we get, of course, the uh, the negative land famous uh, bit where uh, apparently the reason they're sitting on these stools and, and benches with no cushions is so that they can hear a loudspeaker repeatedly f- say the following words. <laughs> Communism is good. Communism is good. Christianity is stupid. Christianity is stupid. Give up. Give up. That's what they're sitting there listening to on their benches. And honestly, I would rather listen to that for 52 minutes than fucking than this movie. Oh, my God. Which is weird that he's not aware that <laughs> right, listening right. to that lecture on that bench would be far more pleasant than his movie. <laughs> Did you well, know, by the way, there's certain uh, Beatles albums that if you play backwards, it says exactly that. <laughs> Christianity oh, is, yep. yeah, yeah. Um, and, and now this is where you really get an idea of just how much he thinks of his audience, too, because he goes, now I know what you're thinking. This can't happen until Jesus returns from the dead and the scorpion locusts show up. I'm like, no, Estes, that couldn't be more what I was not <laughs> thinking right now. That was not my objection whatsoever. You're like the Antichrist of psychics. <laughs> right. right. I know what card you're thinking of. Geranium. <laughs> Back to the movie. But no, he goes, uh, but Jesus also said, if you don't come back to me, I will remove the candlestick. <laughs> so, well, what? Uh, I mean, it sounds like a story about so uh, like so Eboz thirty for thirty. I don't know something like that. <laughs> the life of Brian and the Boz. <laughs> Yeah, there's definitely funny. some anal going on there in case anybody didn't catch that. Um, and then, goes, the beast. But, but, but he's going like, <laughs> he's going yeah, like, you know, the Brazilians, they really love Jesus. Maybe he'll go there because they have Rio and Carnival 
<laughs> Carnival's super cool. You guys ever been there? We should like do a road trip together. <laughs> well, right, because he says like, well, Jesus might leave America because we've turned our back on him and go instead to a country like Brazil. Or Indonesia. He said Indone <laughs> Indonesia is 87% Muslim. And it was in 1971. That hasn't changed. Why the fuck? Were those just the only two countries he knew of that weren't Mexico? <laughs> I was like, I know Jesus ain't going to no fucking Mexico. So uh, what are them other countries? Can't do the Sermon on the Mount if you've got Montezuma's revenge running through your body. <laughs> I don't care if you make your sh Coke with real sugar. Whatever you make your water with is fucking poison. <laughs> of course, while he's saying all of this, we're getting uh, uh, the 1970s Lucinda is having a putting on makeup flashback because that makes her hoary, I guess. Right. And this is where we get introduced to her mother. And her mother looks like, I, where is, it? I wrote it down. She looks like Jeffrey Tambor in Transparent. <laughs> That's what the mom looks like. That's a mean thing to say about Jeffrey Tambor, what I just said. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It was not nice. I wasn't nice to Jeffrey Tambor. You, know, my, you, you, you <laughs> so one of me. You got one. I, I, I had the human version of the maid robot from, uh, Jetsons. <laughs> <laughs> I was the uh, the old lady who owns Tweety Bird, <laughs> <laughs> but with hairnet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and of course we meet her as she's bitching at at Judy. By the way, this is the first time we learn the name of the goddamn character um, that is 1970s Lucinda. Um, uh, Mama is bitching at Judy that she needs to love Jesus more. Right. And then we cut to the infomercial for Christianity. Right, infomercial. This is a different preacher, and I'm like, I wrote my notes. That's his buddy, right? Like he just let his buddy be there. He was like, "Come on, man, you get to do like 48 minutes of the movie. Just for <laughs> one minute." And he was like, "All right, fine. <laughs> we'll make it 52 minutes long." And he, well, right, and and basically the message that he's sending here is that giving him more money will preemptively solve the communist torture problem and the stabbing of your children in the ears with bamboo. Right. As long as you give him enough money once a week. And then we get the montage of people going to church and the children singing about loving Jesus, which was the creepiest fucking thing in the movie so far, except for uh, maybe the fabric patterns. Yeah, the chorus of girls from The Shining. Yeah, yes, terrifying. right, yes. Uh, and then he informs us that every nation that has ever violated the Sabbath has been destroyed. He's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even the, know what to say to that. All the countries that aren't here now have been destroyed. <laughs> well done, sir. And then we cut back to Mama telling, uh, imploring, I'm sorry, Judy to read the scriptures and telling her that she'll be the death of her. Right. And then we cut to Mama dying. Right. Of, of a left breast pain. Yeah, exactly. Right. Of, a, exactly. of a broken heart. <laughs> oh, is that what it was? Of yes. not enough Jesus. She's got a bad case of that your daughter's a whore. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Love Jesus or your mother will die. Yes, Perkle went there. And of course, mom is on her deathbed and only wants her to love Jesus better. Uh, and uh, she, for some reason, won't even say, yeah, okay, ma, whatever, um, I guess. And then the doctor shows up and we get the dead person doctor nod and then we cut to back to communist land everyone's getting out of church and the communist guy comes up and he goes comrade pastor again that's not how the word comrades used <laughs> oh tell me was anyone saved today and the pastor like a doofus yes. snitches out this young yes. couple he's like oh these guys <laughs> took jesus and so I wrote in my notes. I was so excited to find out what was going to happen to them. I mean, were they going to get like levitated off the ground and then eaten by bears? <laughs> were they going to get thrown into a pit full of snakes? But no, they just shoot them. Well, they, but they first, they drag them around behind the church and they start shooting them. And then everybody who's coming out of the church says to themselves, Hey, they're shooting Christians over there. Quick, unarmed Christians. Let's all run towards that place where they're shooting us. And right. predictably, they all get slow motion fall down shot. <laughs> also, I want to point out there's a lot of panning shots of women who are covered in blood with their legs ever so slightly spread. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if it was the intention of this movie for me to jerk off to it, but I did. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> a lot. Like, you know how when you go on YouTube, it recommends videos to you? 
I watched that video so many times. That's the only video I recommend. <laughs> it just br- it just brings up a single screen that says "back again," and I click and it's over. <laughs> and then we get the <laughs> the shot from the preview, and there is no fucking way that you will believe this scene unless I just play it for you. We could not possibly do this scene justice. Uh, it, and of course, if you took our advice and watched the preview, you've already heard this. Feel free to skip ahead about 90 seconds. But if you haven't, this is the best 90 seconds in the fucking history of film. What's the matter, little boy? Where's my mama and my daddy? You killed them, haven't you? Yes. Think of how much better off you will be. The state will provide for you and take care of your every need. Much better than your mother or father either. I won't go safe. I want my mama and my daddy. Now you listen to me, little boy. What is done is done. You now belong to the state. Now you listen very carefully to what I have to say. We do not want to kill you. But we will. Unless you cooperate, Ray. Now then. Now he will step on this picture of your Jesus with your heel. They will let you go free. But if you don't, they will cut your head off. One day you died for me, and I'm willing to die for you. Why, you stupid little fool? And then he chops the kid's head off and tosses and it. <laughs> yes, tosses it across the churchyard. Rose. We watch it roll down the hill. <laughs> and uh, by the way, first he chops the head off, then he grabs the kid's hair and throws the head. Right, yeah, the head just like stays he's pulling on. out the tablecloth, thrown into the place. <laughs> It's like the scene when two ninjas fight and one of them, like, they both run past each other and then one of them's like, Hup! and then he slowly, half of his body falls <laughs> yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Darth Maul <laughs> splitting in half on his way exactly. down. Yeah, exactly. Oh, also, by the way, now the uh, Kami soldier, as you just heard, sounds kind of like Geppetto yeah. from Benos. <laughs> like, the state will provide a for you. Uh, take a care of your every need. Da, 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 da. I'm a real dead boy. <laughs> <laughs> But this is the thing that's too much for Judy. And you know what? I'd love it if Judy just stood up and just said, fuck you and all of this bullshit and just walked out. But instead... I'm going to go marry that long-haired hippie guy. Right. (laughs) Don't you? Yeah. (laughs) But instead, she's like, if I come up here and publicly suck Jesus' dick, will you shut up? And he's like, yes, so she does. She does. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so he... She goes up, and there's a vision of her mother's coffin. Yes, yeah, she's and walking the mom and on. the preacher are saying the same things, like <laughs> Judy, I love you. She loved you, Judy. <laughs> right. I want you to come to Jesus. She wanted you to come to Jesus. Yes, <laughs> I farted a little bit. She farted a little bit. <laughs> and then he throws this little nugget out, and I think this is an important one. He says, and if you think all this shit that the communists are going to do is bad, it's nothing compared to what that all-loving God that we worship is going to do if you don't love his kid enough. So, you know, better be a... Get on board. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and he does that. Look, this man yells at whatever through most of this movie, but the worst part of this movie is him being like, won't you? Won't you come to Jesus? Just like antithesis Mr. Rogers. You know how great Mr. Rogers was despite the fact he was a Christian? Right. This is the other side of that coin. Fred made a deal. He, like, cut his wrist over a Ouija board when he was five. And, you know, he got to be Mr. Rogers. But on the other hand, we got Eustace Kerlunkle or whatever the fucker's name is. This is whatever ran out of Fred's veins into the rest of the world. <laughs> also, can I just point out that when she finally, because we're, we're cutting between her altar call and her going up to see her mom's coffin or whatever, and I just want to point out that mom was apparently buried in that hairnet. In the hairnet! Yeah. I wrote that down. Mom was buried in her hairnet. <laughs> so dead mom is the lunch lady, I guess. <laughs> and the So he says, come to Jesus, come to Jesus. And then the last line of this movie is he goes, Will you come? And I wrote in my notes, nope, never again. I may never, 
ever come again based on the fact that I could think of your face <laughs> at any moment. <laughs> Strong disagree from me. I wrote <laughs> Estes Perkel, you had me at hello. <laughs> With your velvety, dulcet tones, strong southern white man. <laughs> oh, you look, you look like an inside ears. out toupee. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I just want to – there's a couple of things I wanted to point about uh, uh, Judy's big deconversion scene here. First of all, I, I talked her back out of the Jesus shit, and now she does this week in misogyny with us, and you, so you know how the story ends. We can skip that <laughs> on the Breakfast Club close. The other thing is he says, Judy, will you kneel with me now? And I'm like, <laughs> she knelt with me. She'd have a lot more fun. But the most important thing, and if you watch this movie, I want you to look out for us again, free on YouTube, at 49 minutes and 18 seconds – we have Judy with her Oscar clip moment where she's finally finding G uh, Jesus. And I shit you not, the lady behind her is literally asleep. <laughs> yes, I didn't see this. And I went, I saw it in Noah's notes. And so I went today and looked it up. And I started <laughs> screaming with laughter. <laughs> Very the problem clearly. was I was in public. I was walking and I was like, oh, let me see if that's true. And then I just literally in public on 181st Street was like, ah! <laughs> she's just like falling off her hand to sleep. Yeah, it was great. It's great. Um, and then, of course, yeah. And, and then you, you have Estes. And this is so fucking creepy. Like as she's saying, like, oh, Jesus died for me. And he's just going, yes. Mm, yes, mm, yes. Yeah. Like he's fucking stroking it underneath his little thing. That's why he had to kneel down, I guess. Yeah. And then Judy bends over and takes the Jesus right where Jesus likes it. And then heart music, and uh, yeah, it all, it all whew, mercifully comes to a close. Holy! <laughs> the lady shit. who plays the harp looks like her face is sideways. That's all I have. It's my She's last note. Quite Picasso, wasn't she? <laughs> Um, no, I have to be honest, as heavy handed as this movie was, I'm still having trouble deciphering the message. I, I, and, I, and I'm serious here because as near as I can tell, his sales pitch is come to Jesus so that you can be covered in ketchup and get your head cut off when the communists take over. <laughs> I mean, is that selling? I mean, how does this work in your mind? Well, or or you can just become a communist, shoot your mom and go to the front of the line. So he <laughs> presents both options, to be fair. Mm, well, yeah, yeah, right. I just. He just doesn't make one seem more yeah. appealing than the other, Fair I guess. Fair and balanced, like Fox. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I think I speak for all of us when I say that this movie was the single greatest thing that ever happened. So I'm not going to bother with the <laughs> how many bamboo shoots would you gouge into your own ears so that you'd never have to hear this thing again type question this movie lends itself to. Instead, I want to imagine the deleted scenes because I believe that right. at some point somebody said involved in the production, Estes, come on, bro. We can't show people that. So <laughs> my question to you to close the episode off, when that was said in the production room, what scene had Estes just proposed? <laughs> well, uh, I'm going to say that would be the scene about erogenous zone number one, <laughs> <laughs> which, which is, of course, uh, the uterus. The <laughs> pregnant uterus is erogenous zone number one. And uh, we learn all about how to hit the Jesus spot. Yeah. I've been it's doing for it for real. Believe it or not. <laughs> real place. Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wanted to go the opposite direction. It's just a clip that he tries to splice into the movie of com the actor who played the communist jerking off onto his chest. And he was like, what? They're going to make people do that. They're going to make me do that. I got seven and a half hours of footage over several weeks. I think the people need to see the truth. <laughs> we probably need some more footage of that. <laughs> I gotta get it in all kinds of different lighting and everything. Well, I guess that's exactly the right note to close on. So that's gonna do it for our review of if Footmen tire you, what will catch up do? But that's not gonna do it for the episode just yet because we still have to tease you with next week's selection. And while I'm sure nothing will satisfy us after this week, there's still some really shitty movies out there. So Eli, tell us what's on deck. A matter of faith. Yeah. So this is what this is. Um, this is creationist. God's not dead. Basically. Creationist. Yeah. God's not <laughs> dead. Look, I have been looking forward to this movie literally for years. Yes. Yes. For years. You've been telling me about it for quite a while. <laughs> I literally, I tried to, it was playing in New Jersey when we first started the show. I tried to go to New Jersey, but I called the theater. I was like, do you guys have this? And they were like, we showed it once. Someone burned it. And I was like, sorry. <laughs> I have been, but it's on Netflix now. 
And it the trailer makes the evolutionist look like a good guy. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, yeah. It's just this girl go- the plot of this movie is a girl goes to college and her professor has a fun and interesting way of explaining evolution and she comes home to her crazy dad who's like, "Do they tell you about the part where Vishnu creates the universe?" <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, "No, dad, I'm in college." And he's like, "I challenge him to a debate." <laughs> And we also, we get Clarence Gilliard again. Yes. And uh, Clarence back. Gilliard looks like he has not shaved or bathed <laughs> since he was kicked out of the second left behind. <laughs> he looks like he's been in Kirk Cameron's basement <laughs> since that movie wrapped. Oh, and it was so oh. depressing, of course, that the, the, the 80s sitcom that will ruin for you this Christian movie is Night Court. Oh, because Harry, Harry Anderson, Anderson too. yeah, is the, and the is magician. The, Yes, yes, the uh, magician. Too. Yeah, and he was Harry the Hat on Cheers, man. Yeah, yeah. killing me. Him and Ratzenberger definitely were secretly reading Songs of Solomon to each other in a trailer <laughs> all through the eighties, <laughs> and now we all know. Wonderful. So, with that to look forward to, we'll bring episode twenty nine to a merciful close. Once again, huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at Patreon dot com slash God Awful and thereby earn early access to every episode. You can also help us a ton by leaving us a five star review on iTunes and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoy the show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist and The Skeptocrat, available on iTunes, Stitcher, and wherever else podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email God Awful Movies at gmail dot com. All the music used in this episode was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Drafts on Mars and was used with permission. If you like what you hear, hear more by following links on the show notes to this episode. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions, promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. Thanks to the comprehensive sex ed curriculum in public schools, Judy came. <laughs> Three times. Well, there you go. That's that's me right there. That's me. <laughs> Miranda, the general manager at the nearby Burger King, stopped leaving the ketchup packets out front where customers could just take as many as they want. <laughs> Steve Martin, while wandering through communist America, noticed a little boy with a bamboo shoot sticking out of each ear, and a legend was born. <laughs> Brian has trouble sitting because he... Shit, sorry. (laughs) I'm still laughing at yours. (laughs) Brian has trouble sitting because he had Chipotle for lunch. No more Chipotle. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck. I should also note that as soon as I learned of the error, I took care of it as soon as... I took care of it as soon as possible, so anybody... (laughs) Shit, I can't do it though. <laughs> I took care of Is it. That too posh? Yeah. No, no, that's good. That's good. I'll get through it this time. I should also note that as uh, soon as I learned of the error, I t- <laughs> I'm leaving this all in. I should also note that as soon as I learned of the error, I took care of it as quickly as possible. So anyone who downloaded the show after. <laughs> You made the fart noise. <laughs> not, you can't not laugh at a fart noise. It's a fart noise. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Eli. I might just have to put, put your um your sounds in in post. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make it through. <laughs> Hold on, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me wait, one more time. I got this. I got this. Straight face. Show must go on. I should also note that as soon as I learned of the error, I took care of it as quickly as possible. <laughs> so anyone who downloaded the show after. <laughs> <laughs> I should be better at this, damn it, I'm a professional. <laughs> so I, well, we'll make it through one way or the other. It'll just be it'll be on the edit that it'll be tough. Eli sounds irregular today. <laughs> it's 141 Mountain Time in Roswell, New Mexico. And you're listening to Night Call. From New York City, I am Emily Yoshida. And from Los Angeles, I am Tess Lynch. And Molly Lambert. And this is Night Call, a weekly podcast to keep you company during those strange days and lonely nights. Some of you may know us from our previous podcast that we did at Grantland, RIP. Listen to Night Call every Monday on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your favorite shows.